testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, this sermon's entitled RYB. Now, those, this is an initialism that I came up with. RYB stands for read your Bible. That's what I mark. I have these, this marked on several verses in the Bible that, that actually tell you to read it. So I'd like to do a sermon on the subject of the Bible and reading the Bible. So I'd like to open with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, I just pray that you allow us to understand what your word says and to know that your word is 100% true. It's 100% voracious, it's consistent, and it does not contradict itself. And I just thank you for your word. Bless us indeed, bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, God has given us his word, okay? The King James Bible is God's word, preserved in the English language, from Genesis to Revelation, okay? The, the Old Testament is just as important as the New Testament, okay? But see, it has to be rightly divided. The word has to be understood. So this sermon's entitled RYB. It stands for Read Your Bible, period. There are a lot, too many people out there not reading the Bible. Now, and if you don't read your Bible, you're going to come into false doctrine. You're going to you know, start believing things that are not true, okay? And another thing is don't just isolate certain you know portions of the Scripture, you know, Read the, read the whole thing. Now, let me go into some verses that make this clear. Let me open up with uh, Psalm 119. Let me grab a little bookmark here to mark my place. I have a verse I want to look at in Deuteronomy. But I'm going to open up with Psalm 119, the first uh, seven verses. Okay, Psalm 119 is a psalm that uh, the Word of God is, is being mentioned almost, in almost every single verse. So let me go ahead and open up with Psalm 119. It starts out, uh, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou, ha thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Okay? Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. When I have respect unto all thy commandments, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. See, but God wants us to learn more about him. Okay, he wants us to know his word. Okay, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the, it was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So, God's word is God, period. Now, let's turn over to uh, James. It's important to know the Bible, and uh, a lot of people don't know it. And um, the problem is they just they want to stay ignorant of, of God's word, and it's really quite sad. James chapter uh, 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Okay? Draw nigh to God. How do you draw nigh to God? Well, considering the Bible is God's word, you, you draw nigh to God by reading it. Okay, that's how you draw nigh to God. You know, prayer, meditation, Bible reading. Okay? Telling others about the, the, the gospel. You, you, you know, going soul winning. You have to know God's word or you can't do that. Okay? Otherwise, you'll just do it um, ineptly. Now, let's turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. The emphasis is on reading the Bible every single day. Now, before we turn there, turn now hold your place in Deuteronomy 17. And turn over one book to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Let's take a look at verses 7 and 8. It, talk, it tells us about the importance of reading the Bible. It says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. See that? According to all the law. Which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now this is not part of salvation. You can't be saved by the law. But see, the point of obeying the law is to be prosperous. That's the point. Now look at this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Now look at this. Day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. You wondering why people don't have success in life? Because they're not reading the Bible. That's, it's that simple, okay? If they're not reading it day and night. They're not meditating upon it, okay? That's what the Bible teaches. Now, let's turn back to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Now, I've heard I've had some object to saying, well, I know people that don't read the Bible, but they get they get through this life okay. No, they're deceived. They're not getting through this life. They just, I mean, it's all in vain, okay? 
You say, well, they're making a lot of money. I don't care what they're making. I don't care if you have a million dollars. If you don't have Christ, you have nothing. If you don't have God's word, you know, you, you have nothing. The Bible's clear on that. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. The Bible's clear. Now, turn back to De Deuteronomy chapter 17 and look at verse 19. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein. Okay, talking about reading the Bible. That's what this sermon's entitled. Read your Bible. Okay, read therein all the days of his life. So, does that say read the Bible once a week? No. It says all the days of his life. That he may learn to fear the, the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law, and these statutes to do them. So, the, God tells us right here, in his word, we need to be reading the Bible every single day. Every day of our life, period. Now, let's go into the New Testament. Okay, the New Testament, and let's take a look at a few verses. Let's go to Matthew. Okay, Matthew chapter 22. Let's just take a look at a few verses. This is what Jesus Christ himself is, is saying to people that don't read the Bible. It says, Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. It's, it's to be an heir to not know the Bible, period. Okay, now let's take a look at Acts chapter um, 17. Acts chapter 17, we're talking about the Bereans. The Bereans were, 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 were notorious for um, knowing the Bible well. It says in verse 11, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. See, you have to receive, you have to be ready to receive God's word. You can't just, you can't have, an, you can't have your own theology or your own preconceived idea about what the Bible says. And that's why we get all these false doctrines, because because people are not, they got their own little skew on what the Bible says, and then they from that point on they misinterpret everything. But see, that's what we need to be ready. The word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures. Now look at this daily, whether those things were so. They search the scriptures daily. Okay, this whole mentality. I can go. I'm not going to read my Bible any. I'm just going to go to church once a week or twice a week, and then I'm going to let the preacher, you know, tell me his his take on the Bible. That's essentially what he's doing. Okay, and, that, and that, that's not enough. That's not enough to grow. That's not enough to know anything, because you know who, who knows you, you may be, you may be being lied to by your by your by your your pastor. Most pastors out there they don't they don't understand the Bible. They they may understand certain certain parts of it or whatever, but it's just really quite sad that uh we're not gonna that we people choose to not read their Bible. And they just choose to go in in willful ignorance. It's really um not good at all. It's it's horrible actually. It's our responsibility to read the Bible and to understand it. That's why God has given us this Bible, so that we can um, dig into the Word. Be ready to, 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 give an, to give an answer. Okay, Let's turn over to that verse. 1 Peter. Okay. First Peter chapter 3. The, the Bible tells us to be ready. It says, but sanctify, look at verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always. Hey, if somebody wants to know what I believe, I, I can give you the answer already because I already know what I believe. Okay, and as we learn the Bible, we should grow. Our beliefs are, they can, believe it or not, you can change some of your beliefs. You know, if you were taught something wrong and then you come to God's word and the Holy Spirit reveals, you know, something else to you, you your beliefs can change. But see, the Bible says to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So it's very important that we, we, we sanctify the Lord God in, in our hearts. And that, that means to study the Word, to read the Bible, so that we can be ready to give an answer. Okay? Now, let's look, let's look at a couple more verses here. Okay, second, let's see. I'm doing this all ad hoc. I've got like no ver I mean, I had a couple picked out. Let's see. Um, 1 Timothy chapter... Okay, go ahead and turn into 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now take a look at this. These people were learning the Bible at a, at a young age. Look at verse 15. Let's just look at verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. What does that mean? Continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. It means if you believe in a certain doctrine, continue believing it if it's biblical. 
Like, I believe in eternal security. I believe once a person believes on Christ, or has faith alone in Christ alone, they're eternally secure. They're going to heaven no matter what. All their sins are covered. The Bible talks about that in Psalm 65. It says, um, and we're going to look at that. Make sure you you continue in what in what, what the Bible in what you've learned. So let me go ahead and hold my place there, and you no, know, let me give you a verse that proves all your sins are washed away. And that's a very important doctrine because that's what eternal security is based on. The idea, the, the biblical truth that once a person is is saved, all their sins, past, present, and future, have been washed away, purged by by the, by the blood of Jesus. So let's turn over to, to Psalm 65. Psalm 65, and I think it's verse 3, and it's not just one verse. There's a lot of verses that prove this, but this is a really good verse. Psalm 65, and let's take a look at verse 2. Iniquities prevail against me, as for our transgressions, okay, our sins, uh, okay? Thou shalt purge them away. Thou shalt purge them away. They're gone. Okay, now, let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3. But continue, I wanted to point that out, because I mean, there were, a lot of people have been asking about that, you know, eternal security and whatnot. How do you, what do you base, I had one guy, so what do you base that on? God's word, okay, the Bible. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given, by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be may be perfect. Perfect means complete. It does not mean sinless. Okay, that the man of God may be perfect, you know, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it's very important to read to read the Bible. It's very important to preach the Bible. If you jump into the next chapter, it says, "I charge thee therefore before God." And, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, okay, preach the word, by the Bible. Be instant, in season, out of season. Instant, once again, means ready, be ready. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So the Bible tells us to preach the word. Okay, now let me go over the gospel real quick, just in case somebody's listening that's not saved. I mean, my, my sermons for, are for everybody, but there's a lot of unsaved people come to my channel. It's sad. And they leave re they ridiculous remarks, and that's just, that's on them. They're going to, they're going to, you know, they're, they're, that's on them. That's between them and God. They want to leave ridiculous remarks and deny the Bible and all this stuff, whatever. That's, that's, that's their problem. But, but, but the Bible talks about, let me go over the gospel real quick, and then I'm going to close with, with another one last verse on, on reading the Bible. The Bible makes it clear that we are all sinners, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot do anything to save ourselves. Salvation is a free gift from God. The gift was paid for by Jesus Christ. He, he, when he hung on the cross, died for our sins, all of our sins were put on him. Okay, Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. He did this for us. He was perfect. He could, he'd had no sin on him. He, he never sinned. But he died in, in, in our place, in our stead, so that we could have eternal life as a free gift. And the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The moment you receive eternal life as, by, by faith alone, your God's grace wife, covers all your sins and you're promised eternal life no matter what. So that's the, the, the gospel in a nutshell. So, But the Bible makes it, us very, it makes it very clear that um, we need to be studying the Bible, reading the Bible, learning the Bible, and that's why it says, and I'm going to close with a couple verses, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an, exa an example of the believers, in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give, that, give attendance to reading, see that, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Okay? Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Okay, It's not talking about going to heaven. It's not talking about that type of salvation. But he's, he's saying you need to learn the Bible, share the gospel with people, exhort and encourage people 
And the Bible makes that clear, that it's important that we do this on a daily basis. That's all I have. Let me close in prayer. All right, dear God, thank you for uh, your grace. Thank you for making salvation all by grace, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for uh, giving us your word and allowing us to have ample time to study it and to read it. I just pray that, and that people will um, start taking this more seriously. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.